Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Uh, welcome to the official booktube video. I mean, uh, I uploaded a video last week. It's basically the introductory one. So here we are with our first ever booktube video in the Bhagya's Book Cafe. Actually, I feel a little bit uh, weird to actually name the channel after my name, but I thought that would be really good to actually uh, make it seem that it's something personal to me. So without further ado, let's get started. So as you have already watched the thumbnail, this is going to be the 10 books which I want to uh, read before the end of 2021 and I have actually divided all these books into three parts the first part being the books which have already started and which might end up for a month more so I just want to complete it before the end of 2021 the second part is all the books which I have in my shelf which I definitely want to read this year I mean <laughs> with the growing of books with me uh, uh browsing more of the amazon and more of the local stores here i just the hundred books are piling up there and i just really want to get to them and the third part are the books which i am anticipating to read which are not in my shelf but i definitely want to read before the end of the year so uh also the selection of books here are mostly uh, related to the female characters which is strongly through the voice voicing of the female characters and strongly um, by the female authors and mostly by the Indian authors like those are the things which I'm drawn to this time to read more of the Indian works to read more of the female centered books so, and more of the historical fiction. So you are gonna watch a lot of those <laughs> mentioning there so let's get started to the first part all the books which i have already started and i want to complete by the end of 2021 so these are the three books which i have started reading i can actually see that i've actually already page tagged them all so the first one is Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind by Yuval Noah Harari. So I think I have actually talked about this book in my all the books I want to read in September or August. One video there, I'm gonna like drop that down here. This video is actually in my other YouTube channel. So you can actually go and check out there. I have already made four of the videos there. But So this book is about the history and the evolution of man, evolution of sapiens in general and how the evolution has affected the entire earth, the entire flora and fauna. And to be honest, I'm getting emotional even by this, like like watching men do all those stuffs to all the other animals, like making them extinct, like making them uh, suffer and saying that it's because of the climate or it's because for the own good and the being selfish, like we are literal selfish people out here. And, and, and yeah, why and I want to complete it before 2021 is this is such a emotional read for me that I cannot take up a whole whole book in one sitting not even in one 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 week I mean I need it to take slow and actually to get up to it and you have these have a lot of images too uh, and that's a fun I wouldn't say it's actually fun only fun but it's yeah it tastes fun but it's also a lot of emotional uh, connection i'm forming it with here so i just want to take it slow and complete it in the next three months and just uh take up all the information and just uh this book is gonna be with me forever also uh, i'm i'm thinking of picking up the 21 lessons for the 21st century soon after reading this book so wait for it the next book is uh, A Room of One own, One's Own and The Three Guineas by Virginia Woolf. So this is the first book of her. I mean, uh, as I said, I'm drawn to more towards the feminism and the female authors more. And uh, recently I had an outing for myself where I went to a bookshop and sat down and actually read. And this is the one book which I picked up that day. And that's when I have read a few parts. So this book is, uh, the it, it is a, a combination of two books, which is A Room of One's Own and also The Three Guineas. Basically, it's a, it's uh, one of the essays which Virginia Woolf has presented at the 
Cambridge University when she was asked to talk about women and fiction and this is how she talked about it and uh, and and this is basically her uh, talking about it in a different manner like how uh, she went through a few circumstances and relating that uh, to the topic uh, i mean i'm not completely into it again this will definitely going to take a few few weeks or few days for me to exactly understand it and uh, get the whole essence into me but i'm liking it the, the way she uh, describes things the way she actually uh, what do we say metaphorically i guess uh, shows a uh, few instances which are prevailing in the at that time to her situations which is she which is which she is going through like uh, uh, there is a situation where she goes to a library at the Cambridge University and the uh, security guard at the fences that women are not allowed to go to the library alone. She needs to be escorted by a man or she needs to have a permission card or something. And that's, that's, that's pretty uh, <laughs> insane, I guess. Like you need to have a man escort to like go into a library and she says that she's totally uh red with anger and she had turned that down and came back again um i'm still only into a few pages of it but yeah i'm looking forward to complete this the third book is uh, Emma by Jane Austen. Again, I have talked about this book in one of my videos and I haven't picked up after that. But I'm picking up now. This is about a beautiful, rich, uh, self-absorbed woman, a girl named Emma, who actually tries to matchmake. And uh, actually, uh, it's like... Um, it's like a hobby to actually make mat matchmaking <laughs> with someone or someone else. This is most... Okay, I made it worse. Anyway, this is the first book which I'm gonna read from Jane Austen. I haven't read any of one of hers. And again, this is one of the classics and it's going to take a more time uh, because of the writing, I guess, uh, in the, the 18th century writing, it's just taking me more time to actually not, uh, uh, I mean, while I'm reading, I'm just zoning out. So I just have to like, uh, get used to it to not zone out and just stay in that place because it's like everything is coming on rushing to me <laughs> i don't know why but this is another book which i want to read okay so after filming uh, the three books i realized that this video is gonna be a really long one like i think it might be take up 20 minutes so do grab your coffee and let's get on to the second part which is the books i want to read which are in my shelf so the first one is The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. This is one of the books which I wanted to read for long after reading The Diary of a Young Girl, which is, this is set in during those world war times. And this book is mainly focusing about the women and what they were and what they were going through at that part of time. Again, I'm really, really intrigued to find out because uh, it's not only men who went to the war, women were also waging their own war in their homes and uh, and also in the all those uh, camps. No one was spared, right? So I just wanted to read this. I got, this is a really beautiful book. And I have this in my shelf for almost like three months now. And I couldn't get to it because of all the recent <laughs> books I'm getting out from myself and reading them. So this is about um, the story of two sisters separated by years and experiences by ideals, passion, circumstances and a heartbreakingly beautiful novel that celebrates the resilience of human spirit and the durability of women in the wanton France. It's a novel for everyone, a novel for a lifetime. And I think uh, I might actually agree it after reading this book, but I'm really, really excited to go through it. The next book is 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, which is set in one of the fictional towns called Macando, and uh, revolving around the Bondia family. I just hope I'm, I'm, I'm actually <laughs> pronouncing it right. And this, uh, it, it, is a, it is seen that the Macando village is actually similar to the Colombia at that part of time when this book is written. And uh, it revolves around the family where a few of the gypsies uh, usually come and go in their place. And one of them actually drops down a manuscript which is not decipher decipherable. 
and also the setting of this story is during the civil war times during the uh, famine times during the breakout times and all and usually because of that the family actually forgets about the manuscript until one day one of the person actually finds it out and deciphers it all through and finds out what is the hidden message in that manuscript and actually this was said to be the most magical book i have ever read marcus has influenced the world by carolina herrera so I just want to, I mean, this really seems intriguing and this was also one of the most talked books. So that's one more reason for me to actually pick this up. And also this book is also in my shelf for almost like three months now and I'm really, 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 I think I'm gonna take this up in the next month, hopefully. But after reading this, it's just intriguing me even more. Well, I am a really really novice in the field of classics. I I was really intimidated to start them and a few I have read are um, The Picture of Dorian Gray, The Great Gatsby and also The Metamorphosis which are pretty simple ones I guess. I have never read a Dickens novel and uh, this is the first Charles Dickens novel I'm gonna read. Thank you so much to my uh, senior who have actually <laughs> gifted me this book. It's so beautiful. Uh, and this is The Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. Like, uh, I, I so really want to start reading Dickens, but I'm also equally uh, scared to see if I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just scared to how to start it or even if I would like to start it. So this is basically Oliver Twist, an orphan is born in a workhouse and later sold off into an apprenticeship. Dickens situates his protagonist amid the squalid lives of beggars, criminals and predators. When Oliver escapes to London, he meets Jack Dawkins, known by the nickname The Artful Dodger, who is part of a group of juvenile pickpockets led by the elderly criminal faggot. Trapped in a world of corruption and poverty, Oliver, with his pure heart, is rewarded with a fairy tale ending. The dark reality of child labor, the effects of industrialization, and the condition of orphans in the London in the mid 19th century form the crux of Dickens' heartrending novel. And yeah, uh, I think uh, the child labor is really a big problem in 19th century and I, I think it has gotten down a lot now in India too usually the books which I read are usually related to the situations in our country and also what's happening and how it has changed did, did it change or is it the same like they have written in that back time so uh, this is one more book which I want to pick up the last one in this block is the Return of Sherlock Holmes by Arthur Cannon Doyle. This is one of the Reader's Digest uh, edition, which I have with me for the longest time. I think this is one of the first books which I have had in my shelf. <laughs> and this is a set of uh, stories of uh, Sherlock Holmes. I mean, yeah, everyone knows Sherlock Holmes, right? And I just really want to uh, make this uh, a kind of a read in the October spooky month because i don't know it just feels really good to actually start it there this has some illustrations too like this and i'm really really looking forward to read this oh okay as i said i think i can actually make this a book i want to read in october but this is the other one for the last part i have three books in this section which are the books i am anticipating and i definitely want to read which are not in my bookshelf the first one is A Passage North, which is actually shortlisted for the Booker Prize. And uh, well, the first thing which got my uh, eyes on to it is because of the shortlisting in the Booker Prize. And the second thing is this book is set in Sri Lanka and it actually explores the uh, situations in the country during the civil 30 year civil war time. So this book is around a man called Krishnan who actually receives a sudden uh, letter from uh, his grandmother saying that Hatke Taker Rani has been died in unexpected circumstances and that uh, letter is actually brought by one of the social activists and also his ex-lover who is called Anjum I guess so and then he after receiving the letter he starts to uh, go to that place from Colombo to the north of Sri Lanka and what he goes through during his passage like during his traveling and journey and whatever uh, about his past about his love life and also what is happening why did she die in such an 
unexpected circumstances so the book says at the end uh, this procession to a pyre at the end of the earth lays bare the imprints of an island's past and unattainable distances between who we are and what we seek and i just really this 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 small line has actually grabbed my attention a really good and i think uh, this book is going to be really great and i just hope i read it at least in the next month i'm just really i don't know i'm i'm really looking forward to read this the next book is undertow by janvi barua and this is again set in one of those northeast states of india which is in assam uh, and this is about a girl lola who is actually who was actually living in bangalore and who starts going uh, seeking some of the questions from her grandfather and ends up to assam and there uh, she actually wants to know why her mother has been cast off from the family and has been living alone in a far off state that is in bangalore and in her quest she finds uh, an understanding of herself life and bonds that she has that ties together so it is said that it's a delicate poignant portrait of family and all it contains an exploration of home and outside world insider and outsider and an ever evolving nature of love so uh, i think uh, i actually first saw this book in one of those instagram pages i follow uh, I'll, i'll link her page down below she has a really good collection of books from the northeastern state and i'm really looking forward to read all of her um suggestions and recommendations so this is one of the book which i have been thinking of reading for a really long time and i i might probably do it in the november or december month probably also do bear me <laughs> for the light uh, going on and off because the climate is pretty unpredictable these days the last book which i want to read by the end of 2021 is uh, the pearl that broke its shell which is actually set up in the past kabul i think it's in the 19th century again and uh, this is based on the concept of bacha posh where usually in the kabul the women are not allowed to go out or to have any kind of education but uh, uh, and and after marrying they definitely not going to go out so but they have this tradition of bacha posh where one of the girls can actually be uh, dressed and treated as a boy until she gets into a marriageable age and that that actually allows her to have some time to go out and actually explore the world so this is basically evolving around that tradition and uh, it talks about rahima and her sisters where rahima is actually told to uh, dress like a boy and she can actually have that time and she gets to listen to one of the characters of her family her great great grandmother she shakiba who actually uh was often due to a cholera epidemic in the, in in her time and, and and was like treated as a slave by her relatives and suddenly she just uh uh what do we say um escapes from that place turning into a man dressing like a man and then how uh, she lives there and actually have a husband and children so this is actually a story between uh, two women who are separated by almost a century and how they have liberated and found their sense of freedom through the tradition of pacha bush uh, i think this is going to be a really good read and also i can actually find out what is about the tradition more about the country more about the situations more than and now and also i think this is going to be a really heart wrenching book too but really really excited and really really waiting to get this book so that's it for today's guys these are the 10 books which i want to read by the end of 2021 do let me know if you are thinking of picking up any of the books which are in the list or if you any books which you want to read by the end of 2021 i really want to know i would really love to know and maybe i might pick up some of those <laughs> any recommendations that you want to like actually read and review in this channel they are almost welcome and do like share and subscribe and Wait for the next video which is going to drop soon. Have a great day guys. Bye bye.